Hey, Matthew with Event Santa Cruz, and I am here with... Alexander Michael Wong with Upcycle Skate Art. Thank you, Alex, for coming and doing this interview with us. I feel like you're one of like the main people. Like I always call, like, "Hey, I got something going on. You want to do it?" And you say, "Yes, yeah." <laughs> I'm, I'm always down to help you out you are, and to be you. a part of it. You do a lot for the community. Thank you very much. Awesome. So I want to know. Okay, well, first of all, we should we should let everybody know Upcycle Skate Art. What is it? Uh, it is a company slash artist that uh, does uh, functional art and I'm also getting into some non-functional art at Recycle Skateboards. Uh, our main focus is really trying to um, reduce the ecological footprint of skateboarding and the main re way we do that is by just keeping uh, skateboards uh, out of our landfills. So I like that you say that. So you do functional art, but non-functional art. When you say non-functional art, what are you implying? Uh, like wall art, you know, okay. things that you're not using like a table or a bottle opener or cutting board or something Just like Just something that. pleasing to the eyes. Yes. Yeah. Um, so how did you get into doing this? Like what was like the, the first idea that this like concept came into your into your mind? Uh, my youngest sister was actually probably the biggest catalyst of all this because um, I had quit skateboarding a long time ago and just been holding on to some of my old decks. And, Why did uh, you quit skateboarding? I grew up in Phoenix and it was so <laughs> hot that I started getting fat and like, <laughs> it's just this downhill spiral. <laughs> but you skate now once in a while, don't you? Yeah, yeah. I, uh, when I, as soon as I moved to uh, Santa Cruz, I really heavily got back into skateboarding and kind of did it every morning before I went to class. And recently I haven't been able to do it so much, yeah. mostly because of injuries and like just being busy. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I interrupted you. So your sister was the one that kind of helped you. Like, what, was, what, what was that? Oh yeah. yeah, so I had some uh, old decks and she wanted me to make an uh, iPhone amplifier for her out of them. Okay. So that was just sort of the first project I had ever done and it had so much fun with it that as soon as I completed that, I just started making other things. You were at UCSC when that happened, right? Yes. Yeah. So you were, you know, from that point on, quite, how did you like, how did you even source Besides your own skateboards, how do you like? How do you source the other skateboards? Uh, mostly just people that I'd meet at skate parks. Like, I, I'd go to the skate parks like really early in the morning when not too many people were there to watch me just bail hard. So like, there's a there's a really cool old man crew that would chill there and get a lot of decks from them, and then just started um, really networking with uh, the local skate shops and trying to give back to them and the yeah. people that work there and just get in there. Nice. So. What excites you in the morning? Like when you wake up, you know, you got besides, you know, you have like the business side of things too. Mm -hmm. You have to like sell your stuff sometimes, but yeah. like what excites you in the morning to wake up? Uh, I think like working on new projects, um, being able to express like my artistic creativity and, um, you know, just really experiment and um, push my boundaries, mm. like see what I'm capable of. Those are the things that really wake me up in the morning and like want me to like get the day started yeah. yeah is it like is the start of the project the exciting part because you mentioned like you know starting a project is exciting um but then at some point does it get to like okay it's kind of work to get this one done and then like maybe then there's like at the end like the reveal that's exciting again is there like different waves of excitement throughout the process there are i'm usually like so um wrapped up in in the process yeah. that i don't really have all the stages of enjoyment <laughs> I feel like it's always just like you know does this work yeah get it done and then it's like shoot now this is gonna be a lot more work to get it done <laughs> I was a little too ambitious or something yeah, yeah exactly um well I feel like Santa Cruz has embraced your work I mean people just love I mean it's, it's Hotel Paradox is taking orders a lot of different companies I just see your stuff around and I don't understand like I mean is it just you that's doing all the work, or do you actually have people working with you now? Uh, shout out Alec. Um, okay. He worked for me uh, a lot during uh, like the winter season, okay. um, but for the most part, it's all me. Okay. Um, I get a lot of help with Ryan from Santa Cruz Engraving. They're a very large supporter of mine. We yeah. share a shop together, and um, so I feel like I do get a lot of help yeah. from Ryan. Uh, but 
you know, for the most part. It's, yeah. a, it's a one-man company. Okay, so this is a little bit different than your upcycle skate art, but it's still a project, and it's probably one of those projects that you said, okay, this is too big, but yeah, but it's actually small. Um, your tiny house. <laughs> yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about this tiny house project? Yes. Uh, so my cousin Max is just an outstanding woodworker and human being, and... Um, He's been working on this plan to build a tiny house for a while and just sort of wasn't able to get funding for it. Uh, you kind of find yourself in this uh, cycle of um, you want to build something for somebody, but you don't have you haven't built it before. So you don't have the trust. So yeah. we just sort of decided build it and they will come. <laughs> uh, so we went for mm -hmm. it. Um, I decided to help out with the funding and get all that taken care yeah. of. And uh we just went for it. <laughs> so you have a tiny house. It's like it's on sale right now, right? It's for sale. Yes. Yeah. Can is there like a website where people can see like a picture of it or video? I'm adding a link to uh, upcycledskateart.com, so it'll have its own page on upcycledskateart.com that will be. Uh, the trailer Swift. Okay. <laughs> Is that really the name you guys are calling it? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> okay, so if you want to find out more about what Alex does, Upcycle Skate Art does, um, if you want to move into a tiny house, which it is beautiful. It was actually, wasn't it on the cover of the Sentinel one day? It was on the cover of the Sentinel. Yeah, it was on the cover. So um, if you want to actually live in the, in the house that was on the cover of the Sentinel, <laughs> <laughs> then um, go over to Upcycle Skate Art. Um, if the picture's not up there yet, just email them and, and go ahead. They'll, they'll send you some pictures. It's beautiful. Um, thank you so much, Alex. Anytime, bud. Thanks. <laughs>